thank you, thank you for visiting my YouTube channel. This is uh, part two of the series on the power of teamwork. In the first series, or part one, we learned what a team is, and we also learned that uh, how teams function. We also learned that a team is uh, the work of the hands of many people working together with a single mind to accomplish a goal. In today's lesson or session, we will look at uh, the power of teamwork, part two, but specifically on the topic or subject on the biblical foundation of teamwork. The biblical foundation of teamwork. Jesus himself has set a model of teamwork. When we speak about a uh, biblical model for teamwork, we think about Jesus. He devoted much of his public ministry on earth in developing a team of leaders who would later go on to lead the early church. And Jesus invested heavily, heavily on team, on a team that would later on go and reach the world. Jesus built a team of 12 whom we call the disciples. Of course, later they became 11 with Judas, one of them betraying uh, the same vision that Jesus had. At the onset of this session, we would want to point out that teams are not perfect. We would want to point out that teams are messy. We would want to, team, to point out that within a team there could be some who may be pulling to a different direction. But that is not our topic for today. That will be a specific topic for another day. Our topic for today basically want to focus on the biblical model of uh, teamwork. Now if you look at, having looked at Jesus as a model, of uh, teamwork with the 12 disciples and then how they took up that responsibility of carrying his vision after he had gone. We also would want to look at uh, the fact that Jesus, whenever he sent the team or his team, he did not send them as one single individuals. He sent them out as a, in pairs or in groups. And uh, that is a perfect example. He wanted us to learn the power of teamwork. He wanted us to learn how important it is to work in teams. Now, at one point he sent 72. At another point he sent them uh, fewer than that. But he always wanted to set them in, in teams. Now, Apostle Paul, Apostle Paul worked with uh, many, many missionary teams. He work, worked in, with different missionary teams. A perfect example is uh, Acts chapter 13. In Acts chapter 13 from verse 1 to 3, the church of Antioch uh, sent out missionary teams of, of Saul and Barnabas. They sent out teams of people going to go out and, and, and work as teams. Now, it is important to note that the teams that were sent out by the Church of Antioch in Acts chapter 13, that these leaders had spent time together as teams. The scripture records in Acts chapter 13 that they spent time in prayer, fasting, worshiping together, listening to what God had to say. So they already bonded so strongly uh, as they prayed together, as they listened to what God was saying. So when we think of the biblical um, foundation for teamwork, we think of how Jesus used his team of disciples to distribute the loaves and the fish to the people. He could probably have just done it by himself, but he, he, he used the teams to distribute the fish and the and the loaves of bread to 5,000 people. That is, that is an important lesson to note, that 
even Jesus himself knew the place of teamwork, even in the washing of the feet uh, of the disciples. Jesus again demonstrated the importance of teamwork. So it is so, so important that, uh, that we learn from Jesus himself. And in Matthew chapter 18, verse 19 and 20, Jesus in his teaching is speaking about the power of the prayer of agreement. And uh, he talks about whatever you agree on earth, where two or three, where two or three are, is uh, being, uh, his presence being there. So power in the prayer of agreement signals the, the power of teamwork. Uh, where two or three gathers signals the power of teamwork. It is biblical to operate and to function in teams. The Bible has many, many passages that uh, speak about communities of believers who are, have diverse gifts and callings working together. Some of those passages include Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 7 to 12. In Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse uh, 7 to 12, you find uh, the wisest man on earth, Solomon, uh, recommending the power of teamwork. He talks of a man working alone, and he says it's a pity the man works so hard by himself, and no one is there to work with him, because it is much better if a, a man works in teamwork. If you look at the passage in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, from verse 14, the Bible talks about the body, the body having many parts, but all of them serving together. And if you jump to verse 28 of the same chapter, 1 Corinthians 12, you'll find that God has, uh, has called many people and giving them very many different gifts and all of them functioning together for the body, or within the body of Christ. If you look at Ephesians, this, the text in Ephesians chapter four, verse 11 to 13, where the, the scripture is speaking about the unity of the body of Christ, uh, you'll find that there are, there are fivefold ministry there. You'll find, you'll find the apostle right there. You'll find the teacher functioning very well. You'll find the evangelist, the, 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 uh, the prophet, and all of them, the fivefold ministry, functioning together to build the body. So effective ministry in the church through teamwork requires or needs love to be the guiding factor so that these teams can function together. And you will find in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 1 to 13, the scripture is talking about the importance of love as a gift uh, in functioning and putting the team together. Without love, it is difficult for a team to function together. So today, in conclusion, we state that teamwork is biblical. Teamwork is biblical. It is not just uh, for the purposes of the industrial teams. It is, it is a, it's biblical. God himself used, uh, all others spoke about teamwork in Genesis. Uh, though God is one, God speaks the, the teamwork language when he speaks of uh, let us create man, let us, plural, let us create man. It is a, it is a clear indication that teamwork is, is biblical right from Genesis. And if you look at Jesus himself, we have seen he has modeled it. He, had, he brought up to us a strategy of building a team of 12, equipping them, empowering them, coaching them, mentoring them, and then setting them out. Uh, we, when we look at Apostle Paul himself, we find he's working with missionary teams. When we think of um, the early church, we have a perfect example of the Church of Antioch functioning together as a team. So teamwork is biblical. And uh, my friend, you have a vision. You need to work within a team. You need to build yourself a team to help you function, to achieve your vision and you need a team to help you develop plans for it because you cannot do it alone and even if you can do it alone the biblical model is that we work in teams and I hope that from now henceforth that you will begin to build a team for yourself to pursue the vision that God has called you 
if you are the kind of personality that only likes to work by himself, please begin to consider building a team and functioning within a team. But the Lord bless you. I, I hope this is helpful to you. Uh, sometimes we might think that teamwork is only functioning in an industry of setup or in a secular setting like a school or an environment, uh, the different secular environment. No, it is biblical. And it is important that we see how teamwork works in a church. And, and it's good that we, 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 we learn how to really function and operate in teams. May the Lord bless you. I pray that God may bless you as you develop a team, as you put together a team of people with different giftings to help you achieve the vision that God has given you. GOA has reached where we are today because of the power of teamwork. When God gave us this vision more than 30 years ago, we began to put together a team, and that team is what has brought GOA to where it is. In another session, we'll spend the time to see how the GOA teams operates. But for now, we just want you to leave you convinced and persuaded that you need to function within a team because teams and teamwork are biblical. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord be with you. May the Lord give you the right people to put together in a team. But just like we have mentioned, teams are not perfect. There might be a Judas there. There might be a Peter who questions once in a while. There might be another doubting Thomas. The teams are not functioned, uh, they are not uh, perfect. So really, you don't have to feel like, like uh, you're failing. And for that, we will do another session on to see, to see how teams function and see that uh, teams are really not perfect. God bless you. Uh, look forward to see you in part three of Teamwork, which is coming soon. In part three, it will be very, very exciting. It will be on the advantages of working in teams. God bless you. Bye.